Hello, everyone. This is Terry Erzman. I'm the VP of Marketing for Good Game Systems. Uh, just uh, getting our webinar underway here today. If you can hear me, would you please raise your hand in the GoToWebinar control panel? Just make sure everyone can hear us all right. Great. See a lot of hands going up. Thanks, everyone. Uh, today's re uh, webinar will be recorded, and we'll send uh, a link to the webinar recording as well as the slides within the next 24 hours, so please keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions during today's webinar, please submit those in the questions panel in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. With that, I will turn it over. Shike it. would you like to take control, please? Hi, this is Shaikat here. I'm Apache Ignite committer and has been part of uh, Apache Ignite community for more than four years now. I really enjoyed my time and uh, having good time, um, you know, with the community members, as a community members and being able to participate in feature development and being able to contribute to um, Apache Ignite open source project. And really uh, enjoy my time as part of uh, this project uh, development. So little bit about um, the Apache Ignite project. It is considered to be one of the top 20 innovative Apache open source project and also it is considered to be uh, and named to be top five most active user and development mailing list. So you know if you have any questions about the talk or the, about the webinar or any feature specific questions please uh, feel free to reach out to us into our user or dev community. Uh, please subscribe and let us know if you have any questions specific to how you want to use Ignite or related to real-time streaming application or anything specific to any uh, feature that you want to build on top of Apache Ignite uh, and community member will reach out to you and respond accordingly. Yeah, so today's talk, I wanted to cover about data streaming using Apache Flink and Apache Ignite. And these are one of the, uh, you know, top most uh, project uh, in Apache open source group. And, um, and what do we see as, you know, as a data streaming application is that how and how does it differentiate between typical request response type of application or how does it differentiate itself between a batch processor? So to uh, you know, cover the difference between the batch processor or a real-time application, I think the most important point uh, to consider is that in case of real-time streaming application, there is no notion of scheduled periodic jobs which is looking for certain events or certain set of records which it needs to be processed. So in typical batch processing, what happens is you know you may have applications um, which is uh, posting or writing some records to a data store, but and then your periodic jobs wake up, looks into those set of records that it needs to process, process them or do certain tasks associated with them, and then goes to sleep. So when you when you typically look into the dashboard or metrics or CPU usage or memory usage of a batch processing job cluster, you will see like there is that spike of, you know, resource utilization that happens. While you consider or, you know, contrast it with a real-time streaming application, the way to think about it is that it's a unbounded stream of events which is coming through the system and you are applying certain functions on top of that stream. So it is, it's a continuous running process. It's, it's not like, you know, certain time it will sleep and certain time it will wake up. Uh, it's not like that. It's like a continuous process as and when events come in to your system application, immediately it start getting processed. And definitely there is uh, the notion of um, how much load it can process or how many events it can process within a time period. And there are certain tuning parameters that are available. For example, you can add more nodes to, you know, horizontally scale, or if you have a very large node or a box, then you can actually use parallelism count to increase uh, at a rate which you are processing those events. So 
that is i think the contrasting difference is that you know it is a always a continuous running process so uh, some of the examples that we can consider is that like a real time multiplayer online game where many friends are playing that game and their live scores are getting recorded and getting processed and displayed into a dashboard and that that can happen within like you know every 10 seconds what is the score updates that is going in second example could be something like how streamed events can be considered to dynamically change the price of a ride sharing app so if you see like at a certain time period to a specific destination the price of how much it costs to get to that destination may differ so it, during peak hours it might increase or during low peak hours it, it it will be reduced and those are those are some of the examples where real time streaming applications excels in its usage and in terms of latency management stream processes in cities processing the events as soon as they arrive into the system they are typically much more faster so why do we need to use i think one of the main reason is to have less latency compared to batch processors and and we will not have any periodic scheduler jobs so you can also you know consider like if we are comparing with a batch processor how about building out a set of sequential jobs where you know input goes to one job and then it uh, applies certain task and then it writes certain output to a another data store and then you know second jobs wakes up and then start processing from the second step but what happens in that case is that if job one is taking a longer time because of the number of records being came into the system at certain point in time is higher then the second job will wake up it will not have anything to process it will go to sleep so the resource utilization is not happening in a even way or in a very consistent way so while we are processing a continuous stream of events the data can also be processed partitioned in event windows so for example like you know you want to process in last 30 minutes what is the score updates that has happened between the for a specific game and how does the player um, fared out or how, how is their scores looks like and you can take take a slice of your time window and you can say i am interested in that slice of time window and tell me about what is the or just do an aggregation of the events data on that specific slice and uh, the real time streaming applications are easily scalable using job cluster and distributed data store and we will show how how you know while we are building the app during the demo how how we can you know easily scale that and what parameters can we use to you know scale that so in apache ignite it has data streamer interface and it allows you to you know implement those interfaces and that's how different data streaming connectors has been built we have multiple data streaming connectors like strom we have mqtt we have for flink we have for kafka all of those data streaming connector can be used to you know connect data coming in from one of those sources and can be stored into apache ignite or apache ignite can also be used as a data source and you can actually stream data out of ignite using any of those connectors so the typical use case to see is that ignite streamer can continuously stream these real time events into ignite nodes and you can use either ignite's persistent store or you can use completely you know ram and you can store it in in memory uh, cluster and then you can have apache ignite clients which is reading that data from which came to the ignite nodes and then return it or, or use it for any visualization purposes or display it in some ui so that's how typically the data streaming use cases looks like now i'll just quickly go through like if we are building a real time data streaming application how does that pipeline looks like 
So you could see, and here I'm using Apache Kafka, Apache Flink, and Apache Ignite. And any real-time data pipeline will have a notion of data source, which is typically where the data is coming in. Or one of the use case could be your apps, which is publishing uh, the demand for a specific location to the Kafka message queue. And it is just streaming out the event that, hey, so many requests are coming in. There could be burst of events which is coming into the Kafka message queue. Or th this could also be, you know, scores of players who are playing that game can be coming in um, and those are getting stored as messages. From there, you can use Apache Flink, Kafka consumer, and you can read those messages, apply your functions. Uh, you could transform, you can aggregate, you can filter any of those events, and then or you can map. And then the aggregated results can be stored into the in-memory data cluster of Apache Ignite. And all of these applications can, can be horizontally be scalable. So each, and you can, based on the demand of your application's uh, resources, you can actually consider to scale one of these specific um, module as depending on how much is this resource utilization is happening during that time. So you could have like Apache Ignite scaled out to 20 nodes. You could have Apache Flink um, scaled out to five to 10 nodes and so forth. So we will, we will, while we are doing a demo, I'll show like how that whole pipelines looks like. So it will be more clear. Now, as I said earlier that we can also use Apache Ignite as a data source. In that case, what will happen is like consider like your application is publishing that event into Apache Ignite data grid and you could use Flink to stream those data out of Apache Ignite nodes, process those events and then publish it to a, another sync. And that could be any other connector that you want to use for Flink. Flink also has multiple connector which it, it offers to, you know, write it to those sync. Flink also support stream safe points and checkpoints. And the way I see the difference is like checkpoints are more system driven. So Flink has checkpointing mechanism where it considers like how frequently those data points need to be saved. Uh, it takes a snapshot of the job, including the source offset and job status. So the checkpointing mechanism is not uh, controlled by user. It's more about like continuously a systematic process, which is just, you know, going and checking and taking a checkpoint state of that application. And then you could also have user defined stream safe points, which are more like when you decide to do some certain backup or recovery and you want to do some specific safe points. The way I see according um, to the way I usually visualize that is more the difference between checkpoint and a safe point is like if you are playing a game, a game has certain milestone or certain area where it automatically saves based on levels or based on your game milestone. But if you, if you want to exit out of the game, you, you just do a save of a game and you will have a manual override about, about your save points. And that's how I usually see the difference between a checkpoint and a save points. All right. I think I wanted to cover also the current Apache Ignite data streamer that we have. So we have Flink, Kafka, Camel, Plume, JMS, MQTT, Strom, and also Twitter. So these are the current uh, Apache Ignite uh, data streamer connectors we have. And you can use any of these to either use it as a source where you want to use the data from Apache Ignite to be flowing to these systems, or you could use any of this system as a, um, you could use Apache Ignite as a sync where data from any of those systems are flowing into Apache Ignite nodes. Now that that's, that's more around slides, but then I wanted to, you know, show a real time app 
by building and showing like how it looks like while we are building a app and how you can use the apache ignite sync so i'll start with a simple streaming application and go from there and all of these examples are available in github you should be able to you know refer to them if you get time so we'll start with a simple streaming application and we'll build it out accordingly so we start with function main and we say So here, what stream execution environment is considered it more like a sandbox. It, it, it encapsulates uh, or abstract away the your application from the uh, how those get executed, and it offers you certain APIs to you know increase the parallelism of the job, or you can use it to run your job locally or in a cluster mode in a remote uh, set of host. So the stream execution environment offers you that capability. So here I define the environment in which I want to run the job. And then on environment, I could say, all right, I want it to use a stream. I'll do environment dot from elements. And I'll define five users who are using the system during that time. All right. So here, what we have done is that to the stream, we have given a set of elements. Consider this more like a data source. Uh, instead of a real time data source, I have attached a static set of elements which are getting flown to the environment and the and then using those we can we can apply certain function on top of these elements and so on the stream then i can say flat map and let's say i wanted to apply a function So this does not exist and yet, so I'll implement it. And here I can implement the, my flat map string length, which typically takes the length of this string, which is coming in and it will just tell you the length of that. And it implements that function you consider input as a string and it will return so here I'm taking flings tuple and I will implement the members All right so here the string came in and i'll say input and then this would be out and we'll do out dot collect and we'll return the input it's Tuple with input, and then we will say input dot length. So basically, what happened is we took that input as a string, and then we calculated the length of that and returned it. So now 
this is typical if function how you apply on a stream of events so a set of words came in you realize uh, you applied a function to calculate the length of that and then you now the next step would be to you know putting it out to a sync or here i will use as print and this is more like a console print so it will just return the output into the console so let's run this function All right, so I think this is something which I always do is that we attach a source, we apply a function, and we said, like, all right, write the output to the sync or you know to console, but I never said environment.execute. And this is the step which you know triggers the triggers this process to be executed. So once we do that. We should see the output coming out. All right, so you could see like, you know, we have kind of string coming in and then we were able to calculate the length and then it was written to console. So these, these are the building blocks of writing a real time streaming application, which I showed earlier like you will have a data source you will have your application and then the data source will be continuously publishing those events your application will process those events and then write it to a sync now i'll quickly jump into how we can use as another set of sync which is the ignite sync all right so this is more larger version of the previous code that we saw and here we are doing very similar um, steps so you could see the similarity over here that here we again have a stream execution environment but we have also defined a ignite sync which should be our new data sync so instead of writing the output to a console we will be writing the output to apache ignite node and to this environment, the API here typically says add source, which is you know explanatory that you are attaching a data source and which is your link Kafka consumer. So all the events which are getting flowing into your Kafka message broker that will be read from this application and it will apply its function. So here typically we attach the link Kafka consumer and then we get a set of we are calculating here the window counts so we take the text and then we apply a flat map similar to how we calculated the string length here we are applying a flat map and this flat map have, has a function of a splitter so we looked into uh, looking into splitter what splitter does is that given a set of words it you know chops it into based on the white space and then it collects those and give a count. So if Shaikat, white space Shaikat comes in a message, it will take those two, it will put Shaikat one, Shaikat one as an output. So that is typically the splitter function does. And, and the flat map function is very similar. So your input comes in, it, you do apply certain function and then you it get collected into the output collector. Here, the second thing that happens is, and as you see that as and when the stream of events are getting processed, it is a new set of functions are getting applied. And that shows the how fluid your application can be, right? Like while you are writing your application in a functional programming model, you, you can apply more and more functions on to those streams and you can transform and change the output so here the second step is like it is doing key by 
and key by the fields one. So as as the first field came as a string, it, it partitioned the data and it said, take the key, which is the first element which came in. So when Shaikat one came in, it considered Shaikat to be the key. And that key you can consider to be also, you know, in Ignite, if you're storing it in a cache, it will be the cache key. On top of that, after you have partitioned your data, you are we are applying a time window. And what we are doing here is that given a stream of events, we are only interested in 10 seconds of time window of data. So we are basically slicing the continuous set of events based on time. And for that 10 seconds, we will do a sum. So in a typical online game, you want to take a score updates every 10 seconds that could that could be one of the use case so or in a ride sharing app in every 30 minutes you want to check how the demands looks like for a specific destination so on top of that the stream you applied a sum function now the sum function what it does is that as and when the words are flowing in and you have a count you start adding that count to the same key. So when Shaikat one, Shaikat one came twice, it will take Shaikat and increment that count to two. And then you apply a map function and you format the data. So how the formatter looks like is, it just takes the data which came in, it put it in a hash map and then returned it as a, as a hash map of a key and value, which on top of that stream then we got a window counts and on that window count we applied a sync and this is where the ignite sync comes in where we want to write that data which got aggregated and we are writing this data back to sync and here then after that we do environment dot execute we just run that process and here we need to also define certain properties like what is the cache name and ignite configuration properties basically your nodes properties how you want to create the cluster there are also certain attributes like allow override present which allows you to whether you want to override the data which was written before or if you want to set a auto flush frequency and the auto flush frequency does gives you a way how frequently do you want the data which is written to your application to be flushed out to the sync. So here I have set 5L, which is like, you know, uh, five millisecond, every five millisecond, just write the data back to the Ignite node. And, and based on how the demands look like, how frequently the events are coming in or your application needs, you can actually change how frequently do you want to flush your data to the sync. So while well, this, this is the whole application, I wanted to show a demo by running it. So we will start the Kafka broker. All right. And then we will start the link cluster. So we started the cluster and we should bring up the dashboard. All right, so now, I only have single nodes and I have available task slot uh, one. And this is how the dashboard looks like. It shows you the running job, the running job list or completed job. This is typically your uh, Flink web dashboard looks like. And we will start a job and it will show when it gets started. So here we will start that application, which we just now shown. And it the and you can see that the ignite node came up, which shows that 
uh, it created the data source and it registered that application and then it attached this thing and you could see that the job has already started we could see how the job maps look like it has a custom source and you could see you know uh, still now data hasn't flown in but what are the operations that we are basically doing here and we have said parallelism one only one um, sequence of the job is running so and it, it shows the functions which are getting applied here so we'll start um, now the data publish part to the kafka message queue so I had a script written go back to the screen to show what it does so just for the demo i had written a text file where we have a set of player assume like they are playing in and the data publisher just takes those player's name and then you know write it to the message queue so and as and when these events are coming in it actually calculates and checks how many times uh, that got updated so we start this process when it started consider this like a application publishing its demand events or scores are getting updated right so we'll go back to the dashboard and we should see some data flowing in so you could see like real-time records are getting received and processed and being sent and this is how your sequence of application events are flowing through from fling uh, from apache kafka to fling and getting written to apache ignite now we can see um, the data that is being written and we can see it in apache ignite local node and you could see the player scores are getting updated. So I think Saman Thardenis and Sakat are having more scores than Ivan. And it will soon get should updated. Now all of the players have equal score. So and as and when the data gets updated, uh, you could see there is a change which is coming in. So all right. That's that's the demo that I had pretty much. And now I wanted to show the Apache web console, Apache Ignite web console. And here we can also use the, I created a notebook in Ignite web console. And here you could see the test cache where the data is being written is available. And if you are not using the test and points to scan the cache, you can also use your Ignite Web Console to see um, the data which is flowing in. So this will also give you a real-time stats about uh, if, if the data is coming into your cache or not and what's the current state. Yeah. So, I also wanted to show, uh, um, say that you know in Apache Ignite we also have a notion of persistent store. So if you do not want to persist your real-time events aggregated output into memory, you can also choose to you know use Ig Apache Ignite uh, persistent store where it will be written to a durable memory or a disk, and that can act as a secondary storage for the update that has happened. Um, for a specific job so and as in when you can add more and more nodes uh, this will also increase the resiliency of your data storage so i probably one more project and i can just show you that consider like i have my cluster running and i want to add more nodes to it and here I, I'm just adding it based on the similar configuration that I had earlier. What I'm doing is like I'm adding one more additional node to an existing 
uh, job node that we have. Now it will go and join the same cluster. And this increases the um, resiliency of your data storage. So now we just typically created a cluster of Ignite Sync nodes where we are continuously streaming the data and, and that the aggregated results is getting stored in Ignite. So typical um, to Apache Ignite, how we can increase its um, resiliency in Flink also, based on how the demands look like, we can increase if we have a large box, we can say, increase the parallelism. So here you should see, and we can just say count instead of one, two, how much we want to run. So basically this offers us to uh, increase the number of sequences of that uh, process that need to be done. So, and we can also choose to, you know, take the um, local, create a local environment if I want to run this job in a local JVM or um, I can also choose to, you know, just get execution environment and then run it in a cluster mode. So these are, you know, based, basically some of the features are available uh, in terms of how you can scale your jobs and how do you run it um, in a distributed fashion. And uh, you can definitely use the Ignite uh, REST APIs to see a continuous stream of events coming in, or you could use the web console to see um, the events which has aggreg been aggregated and collected. All right, I think um, that's pretty much it that I had for the talk today and I can take any questions if there are. Okay, so uh, first question we have is uh, how different is Ignite Streamer from Spark Streaming? So Ignite, um, the Ignite Streamer is offers more like a, a interface to which we can use any of the um, connector to stream the data inside Ignite or we can use Ignite as a data store. Uh, while we are considering Spark streaming, we Spark can be compared very much similar to uh, Flink where it is more like gives you certain APIs to build a uh, pipeline and you can actually attach certain data source and you can read uh, data from different other data sources. So it's more like um, Spark is more comparable to Flink compared to uh, how Spark can be compared to Ignite. Ignite more is like a data storage, uh, can be used as a data store engine or could be used as a data sources. Or you could also have, um, uh, have Ignite um, uh, stream data in or out of those systems. So the typical use cases for Ignite data stream is to, you know, publish data to Ignite nodes. In, in okay. um, again, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please submit them in the uh, questions uh, uh, window in GoToWebinar. Um, you, you mentioned a couple of use cases. Are there some other use cases where uh, where you've seen this uh, this combination of uh, Ignite and Flink uh, be applied? So, uh, is the question like if there are any other use cases where it has been applied? Yes, or sure, that uh, that you can recommend for this use for this uh, solution. Yeah, so uh, I think two of them is like more like where you can use it as a you know, aggregated event source where um, scores from online real-time games are being you know flowing in, and you can you can 
take a score updates and store it where um, the advantage that you get using flink and ignite is that you can choose at which event time that you want to consider so if if it is an online real time game but some of the player goes into airplane mode and there could be a chance that the scores are flowing in late than you have expected you can also tune the event time at which the event has originated so you could take like real time at which the event has came in or you could also take the time when the event has occurred in the event has actually arrived at flink cluster so i think real time game um, or online games is one of the use case second use case would be um, ride sharing app where you know you can based on the demand or projected demand you can choose to see um, how how that impacts the destination uh, price or you could use it on a um, analytics um, use cases where you want to see how many orders came per hour for a specific event day um, so these are more uh, analytics and um, use cases around which you can use apache ignite and apache flink um, let's see we have a question specifically um, can it be used for real-time market data and processing yes yes that it can be used for that as well yes okay um i have a couple questions about uh really about patch ignite one is uh, how does your in-memory data grid work and could you talk more about you know, the in-memory use case all right i think uh this is a little bit of a uh, larger context so um and um, to cover around how does ignite in-memory cluster works um there are typical uh, scenarios where we wanted to cover so apache ignite uh, when you start one apache ignite node it um, you can decide how it creates a cluster whether you want to run a single node or you want to run it in a cluster mode and when you start a ignite node it you can use how it what is the discovery protocol you want to use so and depending on that you could say like all right i want to use a statically defined ips in TCP discovery IP finder, or I want to use multicast. So as in when nodes are coming in, it creates a cluster of nodes based on if there are other nodes, as you could have seen in the demo, when I started the Apache Ignite um, Flink job, and I started one more Ignite node, it actually defined that, all right, in this cluster, there are already two servers are present, I, I want to join that. So, so as in when more and more instances of Ignite application comes up it joins and creates a cluster and the notion of that cluster is that each of those node also has an amount of heap uh, it can use and all the data uh, is stored in the ram so now you can consider to choose an ignite persistent store where the data can be stored into the secondary data store you can attach a, it can be stored in a disk for a, as a secondary data store now ignite has multiple interfaces one of the use cases like i want to use ignite for data streaming purposes where i want to gather events from different application and store it into apache ignite so you could use apache ignite as a typical cache store where you are just using it for your application cache and if you want to use apache ignite as an application cache there are also two ways you can do it you can use ignite as as a dependency of your application so you if you use a jvm based application you start it and you have a library of apache ignite where you could say i want to use apache ignite as a dependency and use it as a, a cluster of apps which has uh, using apache ignite as a dependency so then when the apps comes up it creates a cluster of a memory store in which you can use that memory store for a cache you in on top of that apache ignite also provides a server and a client mode where you can say all right my application which is taking the production traffic i want to use it as a ignite client and i want to use and i want to create a separate set of apache ignite cluster which i consider it to my data store servers so you can use it in a client and server mode where server is responsible for storing and managing the data where client is just going and updating the 
data into the server. And uh, Apache Ignite also offers near cache, which means that you can also have a copy of the cache which you are frequently accessing in the client side as well. Um, those are typically the cache store use case where you want to use it more to improve your application um, response time, improve the application uh, request response time. Uh, you can use uh, Apache Ignite as a data store also, so it offers uh, options to define a schema and it you can go and define relational uh, data schema relational database schema and you can create your table structure and you can define um, um, the schema for that and it also offers asset transactions so you can basically get all the sql queries uh, support as well as you can do transaction over a in memory data store so those are two use cases Ignite also supports Ignite Queue, where you can use Apache Ignite as a message queue, where you have a cluster of uh, nodes which act as a message queue, and your data is getting published from there. And then you can have a subscriber and uh, consumer um, subscriber and publisher interfaces, where you basically subscribe and consume events which is coming into the Ignite. So these are typical, uh, you know, uh, various use cases that you can use Ignite for uh, more predominantly, um, which I have seen is Ignite use more around cash store, but there are a lot of other use cases that it offers, which can be used for a real time, high velocity, high performance requirements app. Yeah, that, that's pretty much I had. Uh, and there are also excellent uh, webinar available um, from GridGain where uh, we have covered this topic in more details around what are the use cases Apache Ignite can, you know, um, solve or how we can use Apache Ignite for real time other applications. I just gave it just a very smaller set of, you know, use cases that we can actually do using Apache Ignite. Okay, great. Next question. Um, are all the features that you mentioned here open source? The, most of the features that I mentioned here are open source. There are also certain features uh, which is available in the grid gain um, version of the Ignite, uh, but most of the features that I mentioned here are open source and available in Apache Ignite. Okay. Um, is there a limit on the number of caches in an Ignite cluster? And also, is there any limit on the number of items in a cache? Is it better to divide data into multiple numbers of caches for faster fetching data, or for faster, faster fetching of the data? Uh, there is no limit in terms of how many uh, records you want to store or how, um, how that get fetched, but there is definitely a limit about uh, how much your system resources are available. So since Ignite is primarily on uh, dependent on the how much RAM available into the system. So based on the heap size of each of the nodes that is able to use, it can decide how much data it can store in, in memory. Now, you, on top of that, you can also decide if you want to use a secondary data store, you can say, I want to use Ignite Persistent Store. Now then what happens is it increases your uh, storage limit. So you now have an option to store the data into disk and you can uh, have the frequently used data which is getting uh, used by the application stored into RAM, but remaining data, for example, like if you have 100 records and only 20 of them can be stored in memory, so 20 of them will be stored in memory and served from cache, but then remaining data will go to disk store, so remaining 80 events or objects will go to the secondary uh, storage. Um, the limitation is also so more and more you add nodes that increases uh, your cluster capacity as a whole. Also, depending on how you have set your settings for your cache store. So if you have said like replication factor and you have defined a replication factor, um, then based on that, how many copies of the data getting stored into Ignite nodes are also determined. And, but the limits are mostly around how much 
RAM size you have for the node and how many nodes you have. So it's more around, you can scale it horizontally by adding more nodes, or you can also uh, scale it out by adding a larger box and ha having more RAM and increasing the heap size. Okay, very good. Uh, that's all our questions for today. So um, uh, again, everyone, uh, today's uh, webinar was recorded. We'll send around a recording shortly after, uh, after today's webinar, along with a link to the slides. Thank you for attending. Please uh, check back for additional uh, upcoming webinars about uh, Apache Ignite uh, or uh, Grid Game. And uh, Shaikit, thank you very much for today's presentation. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.